before we get started on the quirks, perks, and irks of the 2021 Mercedes-Benz GLB 35, which is on the right and black. I picked up the 250 for a little bit just to show you the cosmetic differences between the front and the sides and, of course, the rear. So 250 on your left, one I'm driving, 35 on the right. So the one on the right is AMG inspired, so you can tell by the vertical based grille. Logo is still the same size, but you can you get a different grille shape on the 250 versus the 35. We'll go down a little bit and you can see it's a different front end, uh, a lot more aggressive on the right. So I'll actually go up to it a bit because it's black. So you can see right there, there's a little more detail there as opposed to on there. So with that, let's go around and take a look at the rear. Still have your full suite of LED headlights and it still looks good. So I'm sorry, I'm gonna back up, give you one last quick look. And what we'll do now is go in between the cars and we will take a look at the rear. Uh, same black mirror caps here, same turn signals integrated into the side mirrors. So let's take a look. The real big difference here is the tailpipe. So you can see on the 250 on the right, uh, it's more of an oval shape. And on the uh, 35 here, I'm gonna get a little closer again, the problem with black and shadows, uh, it's more circular. There's actually a good comparison look right there. So you get the uh, circle in black and you get more of the kind of that squarish oval side, oval size in the 250. 35 has the matte wheels and the 250 has the just regular chrome wheels. Uh, small little differences here. Uh, this has the uh, turbo formatic right there. It's not the formatic S formatic plus, just a regular turbo formatic. Yes, that's a turbo engine in the 250, but it's a 221 and 228 as far as horsepower and torque goes. We'll back up here. And again, that's the uh, AMG inspired one. I'm gonna give you a rear look at them. Um, to me, the AMG inspired black one looks a little taller. Uh, it might just be the way the colors uh, contrast between the black and the white. Um, I think again, because it's, it looks like it sits lower. I'll get down a little bit. Um, just again, being AMG inspired, it just looks a little bit lower to the ground as opposed to the 250. Um, let me know in the comments what you think. Uh, both great vehicles. Um, I would pick the uh, 35. Um, just, I like the performance that uh, Mercedes delivers. This is your 2021 Mercedes-Benz GLB 35. It's the first ever 35. 2020 was the first year the GLB came out. So now that you've seen the intro video comparing the 250, which I didn't drive, to the 35, let's take a quick look around the exterior. So, again, pointed out the girl in the first part of the video, so very, very aggressive, much different than the 250. This is the performance-inspired one, AMG enhanced, not full AMG, because it's not a hand-built engine. Front end's still the same. You got the LEDs and the turn signals are just wonderful because they're so big and they're so bright. The LED headlights, no fog lights, smart move. I'm not a really big fan of the fog lights at all. Oh, well, one other small, tiny thing, you do get the uh, AMG badge right there, even though it's not a full AMG. Anyways, uh, taking a look at the rims, um, Love them, love them. They're upgraded rims. They are the matte black one. You can get the AMG calipers. Um, I opted to have the star straight up instead of showing you the AMG uh, logo on the caliper, but looks really, really sharp. Uh, Turbo Formatic badge right there. Nice big turn signal integrated into the side mirror. Uh, there's a look at the front half of the vehicle, and I will keep backing up to give you a look at the full vehicle. So a very vertical machine overall. Um, I, I like it. It's just, it's different than what's out there right now where a lot of the uh, crossovers, SUVs, CUVs are really kind of sloped at the back. And um, it benefits the rear passengers by having a straighter roof line. You get more headroom. And if you do opt for the seven seater uh, configuration, right in there is where the seven seats would be. So a nice high roof line to make it a little less uncomfortable. Uh, it's going around to the rear. Let's take a quick look. So here, uh, red turn signals and on the GLA that I had a couple of weeks ago, it had orange turn signals. Um, I like uh, orange slash amber, whatever you want to call it more than I like the red, uh, but a nice clean look overall. And again, very tall, uh, vertically based look. Uh, another small giveaway for it not being a true AMG. Instead of the quad pipes, you have the uh, just the two single, or not two single pipes, a single pipe on each side for a total of two, got the diffuser at the bottom. Um, not a bad look, uh, the car definitely moves and we'll get into more of that once we get into the driving portion. A uh, quick look into the trunk. So this is the five seater option, it's not configured for seven. Uh, at least that's not how Mercedes-Benz Canada spec it because, well, you can see there are no seats. Uh, there's a speaker back there and a tire fill kit, no spare tire here. 
um, because, well, it would be a lot of extra work to put a spare tire in the five-seater, then put a, a tire fill kit in the seven-seater, so they just streamlined it and put a tire fill kit in all GLBs. Uh, of course, your privacy shade uh, goes out pretty easily. One-handed? One-handed, nice. Uh, and if you don't want it here, uh, it just uh, simply slides and pops out. A small irk for me, that's as low as the headrests go. Um, I've sat with the seats, I've, I've driven with the seats down for most of my week, um, just to kind of get rid of it. Um, just a clear line uh, for sight all the way to the back. Taking a look inside, rear door doesn't open quite 90 degrees, maybe not 80, a little around 70-ish, I think. Uh, but there's still lots of room for you to get in and get your feet in there. So uh, this is all the way back because it's on rails and that seat's all the way forward. And the seat back is also all the way forward and this one's all the way back. So just as a comparison, you can see just how much uh, space the, the rails give you. And you can see just how much uh, space the uh, adjustment of the seat back goes. So with the seat all the way back, uh, there's plenty of legroom here. So there's that. I'm going to move my seat all the way up. So now you can see it's aligned with that. Oops. And my knee is actually pushing up. I can't get my hand in there. Um, remember now, my specific seating position, I'm all the way up, all the way back. Um, and there's really no reason that you should be sitting all the way back in the rear seats. Sorry, all the way forward in the rear seats in a five-seater configuration. Um, I guess, well, you can if you want to. You do whatever you want. Anyways, uh, it's a quick look in there. You do get one USB-C port there. You get a couple of vents and a touch of storage and some net storage behind the seats as well. Uh, let's close up the rear door, take a look up front. A uh, big perk for me is the four-way adjusting headrest, so up and down, forwards and backwards. This being the GLB35, you get extra bolstering on the seats. Uh, really, really comfortable. You get the thigh extender as well, and uh, your um, lumbar supports there. And in typical Mercedes fashion, the rest of your seating options, our configurations are there. A uh, bit of an irk, no storage here, uh, just to kind of straight pass through. I did put a bottle here because if I put it up here, it kind of gets in the way of the HVAC stuff, um, so not to worry. Lots of space there, and there is your trunk release upgraded Burmeester sound system here. AMG um, sill there and on the floor mat. Uh, paid option gets you this beautiful half, or part leather, part Alcantara steering wheel with the AMG at the bottom and the red stitching. Uh, feels really sharp, feels a little weird. Sorry, looks really sharp, feels a little weird. Um, having the softer material here and then the leather here, but you do get the little center stripe. So a uh, nice move there. This does have the upgraded pair of 10.25 inch infotainment screens. There's a cool look at the opening graphic. I really like that. Mercedes has such a great attention to detail here. Uh, start stop button. Uh, this one would take too, too long because this is very similar to the uh, interior of the GLA that I had a couple of weeks ago. Uh, I set it to sport because I like the uh, yellow, very springy, very bright. Um, again, fully configurable, that dial in the middle and that in different types of themes as well. And you get the AMG down at the bottom and that's your regular infotainment system. You want to go touch screen, great. If you feel you can master the pad, uh, which I definitely can't, um, there it is and a bunch of hard touch buttons flanking either side of it. It's a, it's a good system. Um, just for me, I don't like the pad. I would have rather had a dial. Um, wireless charging, paid upgrade here. Uh, get your couple of cup holders, another USB-C port and your cigarette lighter adapter goes there. Taking a quick look in here, two more USB-Cs. Um, uh, I know if you're spending like 60 grand on this, what's another 20 bucks on an adapter, but I know, just give me something for my iPhone, please and thank you. Upgraded light package, I have it set to bluey-ish, purple-ish. Um, I'm not, yeah, it's it's more blue, but on camera it shows up as purple, but um, yeah. Uh, cool perk here, kind of an optical illusion. Um, because that part's flat and that part is also flat again with the vertical theme uh, as with the rest of the vehicle. It just kind of looks like it's one fluid piece, uh, but it is definitely not because there's the bottom and there's the bottom. Um, nice uh, metal finish here just adds in that. But to me, it's a touch of class. I like minimal use of uh, aluminum and metals on the inside of vehicles. Uh, you do get a standard panoramic sunroof where the top, the front portion, sorry, is a little oversized uh, and, and it opens and tilts. And you get the back one for your rear passengers to get some light in there. Um, I wanted to show you this last time, but I'm going to show it to you this time. I think it's a cool thing. So if we look right there, the lights are on. And I do that on purpose because that's how I do the outside of the video. I'm going to put the high beams on and just watch the ends of the light. So it stand, it's more of a straight line showing you that the high beams give you just that different look. Um, just I think it's a cool little attention to detail here again. Uh, regular lights and they're tilted down like that. You put the high beams on and then they turn out to be um, very horizontal. 
small little quirk. Uh, I'm gonna call it a quirk because I quite like it very much. So uh, you do get folding mirrors. Let's do that, take a look. Because if you're in the tighter parking spot, then uh, that's a good option for you to have. All right, uh, that's pretty much gonna wrap up the inside. Very Again, very similar to the GLA. Um, oh, one other uh, small thing here. This is also a paid upgrade. You get the color um, option here for adjusting uh, your different drive modes. So we have Sport Plus. Um, let's go back to Sport and you get C for Comfort um, and you get your different uh, adjustments here. Um, the cool thing is if you're not really sure where you are, you know where the buttons are, uh, it does show up right there. So that's your Sport, Sport Plus and Comfort and um, M and D. And then you get your uh, your basic in there for the AMG Dynamics. Um, actually, let's uh, stick around here for a sec. I'll hit home. Um, so there's the track uh, pace, which is you know the new track um, activation and use only on closed off tracks away from public traffic. There are no tracks in the vicinity, so it's kind of a foolproof thing that it won't let you, um, or just it'll let you know that there are no tracks in the vicinity. Um, the drag race option. Uh, the telemetry, just that, and you get your different options there. Uh, it's a pretty cool system if you are uh, looking to do some performance driving with the vehicle. Um, you look for all tracks too as well. So it's a pretty cool system. Uh, I didn't go on a track. I'm not allowed to go on the track with any of these vehicles. So, but uh, you know, just uh, just letting you know as well, and just to kind of play around with that, and you get a lot of cool information. Uh, drive to the start line. Uh, it select start, so that kind of walks you through all of um, the uh, the track options there. Uh, let's take a quick peek at the AMG performance since we're here anyway. Anyway, so you get all sorts of stats and information there, and you get to the engine option. Uh, you get your performance and your engine torque, uh, temperatures for the temp temperatures for the engine, and uh, as far as also the oil. And you get your cons consumption dynamic select as well. So a lot of cool uh, goodies here for the AMG. Uh, sorry for the. Um, uh, GLB 35. On the road with the 2021 Mercedes-Benz GLB 35. Under the hood, it's a 2.0 liter turbo four and AMG enhanced. So it's not a full AMG because it's not a hand-built engine, but again, AMG enhanced. So 302 horsepower and 295 pound-feet of torque all through Mercedes's, Mercedes's, all through the Mercedes <laughs> eight-speed um, uh, transmission. Driving dynamics, it is very quick. It is very fast. The 250 version of the GLB is 221 horsepower, I believe. So bumping up, uh, what is that, uh, a little over 80 horsepower really makes the car sing as far as wanting to be driven and just the strong driving dynamics. And it's still a really comfortable ride, um, even though there's 300 horsepower underneath the hood here. Um, acceleration can be a little abrupt if you're going from, let's say, a dead stop at a stoplight stop sign, and you're very gentle on the gas pedal, it's not quite a little muddy, uh, but it just gets a little stutter steppy between first, second, and sometimes third gear. Uh, if you just give it a regular amount of gas for a smooth acceleration, all of that goes away. And if you put your foot all the way down, then the, uh, the 35 just runs and it runs very smoothly, very stable, and um, it's just, it's a lot of fun to drive. City streets, great, as far as you're smooth on your acceleration. Uh, highways, rural roads, equally as good in a parking lot. Lots of tall windows here, and the benefit of that is you really get nice sight lines, not only out of the front and the rear, uh, but if you're doing your shoulder checks or uh, making your turns to get into parking spots, forwards, backwards, or parallel parking for that matter. Let's jump into the world of fuel consumption. It's a 60 liter tank and it needs premium fuel. So in liters per hundred kilometers, we are at 11.1 as far as our city streets go. We're at 8.9 on the highway and our blended total comes out to 10.1. Not too bad. Um, bigger engine, uh, sport tune or performance tune, sorry. Um, the numbers really aren't that bad, and it's a relatively smaller vehicle. Um, I believe it's a subcompact crossover. Um, I'm not sure what they would call the GLA because the GLA is still a little smaller than the GLB. Um, but you look at this and you don't think it's a GLC or a GLS for that matter. So it's kind of just it's like in between e kind of SUV and. 
I, I don't mind it. I've always liked the boxy shape. My first vehicle when I was 16 was a Volvo 240DL 1987. So yeah, I, I'm kind of a fan of the boxy look and it just it's different. It stands out, but it's not it's not so different than everything else that's out. What you've seen so far with the GLB 35 that I'm driving does include some paid upgrades. So it has the premium package and the highlights are uh, blind spot monitoring, wireless charging, and the upgraded Burmester sound system. It also has the AMG driver's package and that gets you this really cool steering wheel that is part leather, part, part Alcantara, and it's squared off at the bottom and along the sides. It's got the red center mark and it's got uh, the color LED uh, drive modes as well as the different driving dynamics uh, on the left side of the wheel. Uh, it's got the night package and it's got the navigation package as well. I don't know if I'd go for all of them. I would go for the premium package um, mainly for the uh, the blind spot monitoring, wireless charging and the uh, Burmester sound system. Those three things are important to me so I would spend the money for that. I don't know if I'd get it with seven seats. I think it'd be pretty uh, cramped back there. Uh, for anyone, uh, regardless of what size you are, I would pretty much configure it in black like it is here and with the five seat option. But you get a massive panoramic sunroof as standard fare. Um, I would get the uh, nice matte uh, AMG wheels. Those things look absolutely gorgeous. Uh, and the classic rim design just puts the exclamation mark on it. If you've got any questions on the GLB35, let me know in the comments and I'll do my best to get back to you as soon as possible. Uh, thank you so much for watching. I really do appreciate the support. And feel free to subscribe if you haven't already. And feel free to tell somebody about the channel who you think might enjoy what I do. Be well, be healthy, be safe, and I will see you in the next video.